I'm gonna go through every single label in this pseudo thrift store in uh, Oaxaca, Mexico. These are all American brands. These are the same brands that you will find in thrift stores in the United States. The point here is to show you what's worth picking up, what isn't worth picking up based on what is in high demand on eBay and what goes for good money. I'll explain as we go. And now I have finally figured out the very advanced technology necessary to be able to pause the video as we go, as opposed to just shotgunning through. I don't know what the issue was. I don't remember why I couldn't do this before, but I figured out a way to do it uh, with my tiny brain. Here we go. This is Nike. Uh, Nike is so-so. Arizona is poor, is bad. Let's see if we can get this out of the way. Um, Chicago Bears NFL stuff can do okay. The vintage NFL stuff tends to do better than contemporary. I am not great, or I should say wasn't great at selling NFL or sports clothing period because I know nothing about it and it's highly seasonal and it's based on what's happening with the teams. Um, the vintage stuff tends to be worth good money, especially vintage leather stuff, letterman jackets, stuff like that. Outerwear typically worth a little more. That's something, something. Galaxy is nothing. DC is a skate company, it's pretty poor. I would skip it. This contem contemporary stuff like the, the mount, anything that you would find at Walmart or Target, anything, even if it's pop culture stuff like Star Wars t-shirts that are of contemporary manufacture, I'd probably skip them. There is a couple of provisos there, but that's especially true of, um, or specifically true of t-shirts, that's what I'm talking about. Same goes for this, although that is new. Um, can we, ah, yes, we can backstep, look at this. So that is new. So if I found that for like two, three bucks, I would contemplate picking it up. You would, uh, I would encourage you to run active comp searches on eBay to see how low the competition is pricing shirts because this kind of stuff is still pretty common, even though it is name brand. Polo Ralph Lauren, the t-shirts I would probably skip. This is a vintage Y2K tag. It's not a good brand. I tried to find it on eBay, couldn't find it. But that aesthetic is Y2K, which is a good keyword to know. That stuff is, I think, still popular. I don't know what B the Change was. Another polo shirt, polo Ralph Lauren shirt, skip it. Those basic Nike tees, these graphic tees, the cotton t-shirts, typically skip. It's the performance t-shirts that you're really after, the Nike T, the big swoosh. I mean, if you find it for like a buck, two bucks, maybe, but it's probably not gonna sell that fast. There are always exceptions. Another Nike graphic T. This is Def Leppard. That is a contemporary screen printed label. You can even see the date right here, 2020. Um, if it's vintage, 1000% pick it up, but this is, target material as we were discussing. Under Armour, basic t-shirt like that, I would probably skip. Some of their stuff can do okay, especially if you lot it up. Uh, Branson, Missouri tourism shirt. Apartment 9 is one of the assiest of the ass brands. Route 66, also trash. Basic Nike graphic t-shirt. See, all of these are probably the same size. The prices at um, this shop were upwards of 10 bucks each per piece per shirt. So I absolutely would not buy these uh, in that context. If I found a bunch of these at the bins, all the same size, I would pick them up, put them in a lot and flip them, or just sell them for really, really cheap if you got them for really cheap, but probably put them in a lot. Otherwise, I would skip those. That's Old Navy, skip it. Religious shirt, uh, skip it, not worth anything. That was St. John's Bay, it's nothing. Old Navy again, vintage Old Navy can do okay, especially denim and leather and stuff. Columbia, basic t-shirt like that, I would probably skip. Columbia tends to not be worth that much. The PFG is kind of what you want. Stafford, that was Stafford. This is 5.4. 5.4 is like a fast fashion loot box brand. It's terrible. Stranger Things, knockoff thing. Reebok sucks, typically. Vintage can be okay, but be really careful with uh, Reebok contemporary stuff. Fila, kind of the same deal, not that great. Nike Pro is interesting. The sell-through for Nike Pro is reasonably healthy right now. Um, 
I used to love selling Nike Pro Combat, and then the Pro Combat and Nike Pro generally kind of dropped off. I don't think you'll get a lot of money for this, but the numbers are back up. Uh, not 100%, but I think it was around like 70% sell-through for Nike Pro shirts. I'm going off research I did a couple days ago because my external hard drive died. Uh, you're coming, I'm coming to you from the new hard drive. So uh, this research is like a couple days old. I don't remember exactly, but Nike Pro is doing okay. It's doing okay. Uh, that was all ass. George is ass. Terrible. Super dry is not very good. You would think that this would be good. Even the Peak Polo, um, it's a Japanese brand, but it's a fast fashion brand and it just doesn't have very good resale value. Knit polo shirt there. George, it's terrible. Loops Link, it's nothing. I couldn't find it on eBay. Uh, well, I found a couple of things, but it's very generic and tis ass. This is, appears to be unbranded. It's probably Land's End or something. Hagar is uh, not good. BCG is not good. Cutter and Buck is uh, not good. I don't know what team that was. Architect Golf is nothing at all, turns out. Express is a fast fashion brand that is typically not worth anything. That's a very basic Nike polo shirt. I would skip it. That's a vintage knit polo from David Taylor. The sell through is not very good. Roundtree in York is pretty terrible. George is very terrible. Jeff Rose um, is bad, it turns out. It's the first time finding this tag, but it's not worth anything. Basic knit polo. Looks like a golf course or something. Ben Hogan is not very good. Dio Lax. Was that good? Huh. So I guess this is a bolo. DLX polo shirt is 13 sold and zero actives. That is a very good sign. Search the brand generally. DLX, 13 to 17. This looks like it's all golf. DLX shirts for men. Yeah, it's just a golf polo shirt brand. So that is a bolo. DLX is a thumbs up. Doesn't look very common. But it's got a, well, it's got, if you look here, man, I love reversing. I love this. See all this streaking here? You can probably still sell it, but it'll sell for less, and you have to disclose that as a flaw, which it is. That's probably from sweat. St. John's Bay is terrible. Just skip it. Performance, uh, that's members. Look at this. Look at, look at us go. Members mark is really bad. Skip it. Banana Republic. Luxury touch is not very good. Sometimes you will find Banana Republic shirts with between three and five of these modifier words under the Banana Republic tag. If you look up that specific string of words, sometimes you can find good bolo items in Banana Republic. Otherwise, I would be very careful. Well, I would be very careful with Banana Republic. Outside of that exercise, I found it to be um, not worth picking up. Edwards is nothing that's like work clothing. Grand Slam is a poor golf brand for resale, not very good. That is Van Heusen, looks like. Can't tell. Structure is nothing. Nike Golf, Nike Fit Dry. Um, you would think that that would be great, or maybe you would think that, that would be great. It's very seasonal, they can be okay in like spring, summer, uh, but be careful with your buy cost. It's typically not a bolo. Uh, Polo Ralph Lauren. These um, Polo Ralph Lauren custom slim fit polo shirts in XL were around 100% sell through. I do remember that. Same, kind of the same deal with Banana Republic. You uh, have to be careful with the sizing and the seasonality of polo. Um, I have a whole breakdown of Polo Ralph Lauren in the menswear manifesto, which is 401 men's clothing brands broken down in, in that case, extreme detail along every sub line of Polo Ralph Lauren and um, broken down by category. And uh, to pay me what you want product, the link to that is in the description. r, &R casual is nothing. Dunning is not good bunch of these done in golf. Again, like if I found all those at the bins, maybe I would throw them in a lot, but otherwise skip them. Claiborne is uh, terrible. That's nothing. 
Croft and Barrow is highly nothing. Another Nike dry fit. That's a um, Texas Longhorns polo. When you find teams like this, if you don't know, as I don't know anything about anything, if you don't know what logo, what team the, the logo corresponds to, use Google Lens to look it up. It'll tell you. Um, and you can run searches for the specific schools or specific teams, and sometimes the sell-through will be good. Uh, not sure on that one. That's a vintage tag. So when the lettering is yellow, that means it's contemporary. When it's vintage, uh, um, it, it, when it's vintage, it's white lettering. These knit polo shirts, pretty basic. I would typically skip them unless you can get them for very, very cheap because they're always, always eternally flooded on the market. Izod. Um, Izod is ass generally, but um, Izod saltwater Hawaiian shirts are doing surprisingly well right now. I found that out somehow at some point. The sell-through is even. It's like 100% sell-through, and the prices are really not bad. Um, the Izod saltwater is different from just Izod, vanilla Izod. Camelback from Dunning, skip it. That's like a corporate thing. Usually skip those. That's Callaway, and it's bad. That's Broken Threads. Not a good brand. This is some no brand Hawaiian shirt with like a big pink bird on it. That's kind of cool. Sonoma is really bad. That is Newport Blue. Unfortunately, was it bad? Okay, I gotta double check this now. Fifty six sold, fifty seven actives for this string Newport blue vintage Hawaiian shirt. Let's try just Hawaiian shirt sixty three to two sixty four. So I would say very loosely, very approximately, this might be a bolo, the uh, vintage Newport blue Hawaiian shirt. Although the overall health of Newport blue Hawaiian shirts tends to be or appears to be somewhat poor. So provisionally, cautiously, that's maybe a yes. And pineapple print tends to uh, do pretty well in Hawaiian shirts. 28 palms. Nah, that's pretty skippable. 62 to 157. Fairly low-ish prices. Yeah, probably not. Not the worst item in the world, but not that impressive. XL, the size is okay. Visitor, uh, I do remember looking this one up and being surprised that the sell through wasn't higher because it's Flamingo print. Historically, Flamingo print has done pretty well. And Log is a terrible brand, that's H&M. Um, I would skip that one. Campiamoda is not very good. Another pineapple, Old Navy. I remember this one too. The sell through was like 50% on Old Navy Hawaiian shirts. So the brand is not that good, but this really loud standout graphic <coughs> of pineapples could be could be worth it. Um, I think the brand got pulled off of this one or the brand is classic, in which case I just couldn't find it. This one is the find of the shop. Dixon Flannel Company is one of the easiest clothing brands to flip in used condition. It will sell itself. This shirt's probably worth like 50 bucks. Out of all the stuff that I found at this place, this was the one shirt that I was the most tempted to buy uh, to send home to eventually sell or sell, you know, send to a friend to sell for me. But after the shipping, it wouldn't really be that much money, uh, especially when the profit was split. But this is just like an, a 10 out of 10 flipper, especially right now with this weird print. Uh, the, the no brainer of all no brainers. If you find anything from Dixon, just pick it up, flip it. That is a Columbia PFG Super Bahama fishing shirt, and those are Marlin. Uh, that's a Marlin. That might be a swordfish. This is a deep sea fishing fishing shirt, and the sell through on these is very good. Super Bahamas are a little preferable to just the vanilla PFGs. This is called a cape. Uh, this is a caped back vented fishing shirt. <coughs> totally picked that up. This is terrible. That's an ass brand. Um, 
And Joseph and Feiss is also Joseph und Asche. I'm going to cut it off there because with the pausing, this is lasting longer than I thought. There will be a part two with the rest of this stuff. Um, because the hard drive broke, I lost access to all of the POV footage that I shot when I was still in San Diego before I left. I had a whole bank of it, and now it's gone. So I'm going to have to find more of these out and about and shoot them uh, to bring you more of this street heat. But thanks for watching this. If you're a newer reseller, the menswear manifesto will fill in a lot of the gaps if a lot of these brands are unfamiliar to you. All right, I will see you on part two. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.